Hello, hello, hello. It's Nicholas Rosinski, transformational coach and consciousness scientist here, weirdly excited, in week three of a 13-week tour of the frontiers of therapy and spirituality. And as you know, if you've been following along, the center of this tour is Richard Harvey's Sacred Attention Therapy, or SAT itself, a frontier contribution in the field of therapy and spirituality. So if you'd like to know more about Richard's work, about SAT, please visit www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And so on to that weird excitement. So <laughs> week three really is pivotal because it's where we move from the structure of light that we looked at last week into the origins and depths of darkness. It's where we hit bottom and actually start to understand the nature of all bottoms. So not that many people get excited about uh, separation, suffering and darkness. So my excitement might be a little bit weird. But as I'll speak about in the coming weeks, having a comprehensive and deep understanding of separation, suffering and darkness allows us to frame more comprehensive, more productive, more compassionate responses to that movement of suffering. So last time I laid out a twofold above and below the dashed line view of real reality of non-dual light in all its forms and non-forms. Uh, above the dashed line in the base layer view, uh, reality is composed of a self-creating ground which intensifies itself in creating a non-separate one being which further extends the whole construction by illuminating or focusing on certain aspects or constellations of aspects in itself and these foci are what I call souls. Now below the dashed line the same threefold construction above the line or fourfold including the arc which I'm going to talk about in a moment appears as and or creates an endless ocean of form-based universes plus a formless realm both embedded in a common context that's beyond division in a form or formless way. So where are we in this picture? Where is the modern world and all its challenges? And why do we need to do therapy and practice spirituality? So the answer to all these questions lies in a bigger picture still, which complements real reality with what I sometimes call alleged reality, or what other approaches often call the dream. So in awakenings of various kinds, we move from the dream towards or into reality. And the defining quality of the dream, or what makes it a dream and not reality, is a pervasive quality of separation, division and fragmentation. So please understand, if you don't already, that the appearance of differentiated forms, bodies, chairs, trees, stars, planets and so on, is not the same thing as separation. Experience and activity is only separated and separating if those forms are divorced in appearance and movement from a deeper, radically undivided context. So how does real reality, which I've emphasized is radically non-separate, give rise to a dream of separation? So I suggest that at some point, one or more souls decided against all good advice to experiment with renouncing their created by status to install instead a self-creating or self-sourcing character. Now animating this experiment, investing it with the creative power that animates universes themselves, then led to what some famous religions have called the fall. So a word about that. Firstly, these reports by some religious traditions are unfortunately tainted by the guilt-tinged viewpoints of the egos that wrote or rewrote scripture. Emphatically here, the fall is not a punishment. It's a natural order consequence of deciding to leave the natural order of reality. Secondly, the fall, or better, the separation, never really happened in the sense that the soul or souls who created it are metaphorically perfectly safe in heaven albeit metaphorically asleep and dreaming the dream of separation. So I sometimes refer to the dream as the great as if, an imagined fall, an alleged separation in which it's as if everything's separate. Nevertheless, in the dream, that separation is very real experientially and to leave it behind, we have to awaken. 
So briefly, the decision to leave real reality, which is everything, plunges soul or souls into endless nothingness, inducing guilt and fear through a mistaken interpretation of what just happened here. Now, this would go on forever if it were not for the ARC, the agency that restructures consciousness. This agency was inserted by the ground into reality as a sort of insurance policy for exactly this eventuality. So in the darkness, the ARC negotiates another path with the separated ones, repackaging all the energies of guilt and fear into what we call matter, and then launching the Big Bang, a universe in which the separated soul or souls can gradually undo a decision to try on self-creation, dispel the guilt and fear that's been repackaged into matter, and so restore the entire universe to its proper place, in the ocean of separation-free, love-only universes. For humans, we call this path human awakening, and it's the central concern of Richard Harvey's sacred attention therapy. Now, for the matter content of the universe, I call this same movement the awakening of matter. And as I'll start to explain next week, understanding matter in this way is the key to a long-sought unification or better, harmonization of science and spirituality. And that harmonization in turn is a massive step towards resolving the problems of modern society and founding the next great phase of human civilization. I'm Nicholas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.